Old to me is like 50s, maybe older. Oh, okay. But like that's not like old, old. Obviously, there's like different stages of old, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've like, 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 never like you're heard starting. of it. Different stages of old. 50s okay. is like you're starting to be old. Okay. And then 60s is like you're kind of middle old. And then okay. 70s is like you're like old, old. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I kind of see it. But I mean, obviously, that's a, that's subjective. Okay. Well, no, I feel like I I totally agree with that. Like people aren't gonna. Maybe she can come around here so we can. Uh, at least, like, people aren't gonna vote, like, at least older people aren't gonna vote Bernie because he's so, yeah, like, the furthest part of the spectrum. Maybe that's why young people like him, because mm. he's gonna give the change that, like, we want. Mm. Um, and what change is that? Uh, just, like, more, like, for, like, rights of human beings. Mm. For some reason, I don't understand why, like, older people just don't want that. Uh, they're not, like, voting for, like those particular things and we're just trying to make like a radical change. But I also disagree with the fact that he's gonna be able to give us what we want because like I feel like every politician promises things that they can't do. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So I feel like maybe not everything that he's saying is like actually no. gonna be something yeah, that he's but maybe we just like the idea of the fact that he's trying to turn everything on its head because I agree. we we want that, we need that. But for some reason, like, we're still not showing up to the polls to, like, make that happen. So. And why is it that young people are not showing up at the polls? Just because of these reasons you just said? I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot, uh, or a lack of political efficacy, especially, like, um, being teenagers or younger people when we're first starting to vote. Um, it feels very separ separated and, like, we're told oftentimes that like, oh, you're young, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and I feel like sometimes there's not a lot of education um, regarding these issues. Mm -hmm. Like, learning about economics completely changed the way I look at fiscal policies and the way that those are presented. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's so important to feel like, yes, like it is important to do your research, it's important mm -hmm. to go out and vote because that actually does make a difference. Like, like your one vote yeah. is, it matters. It does. <laughs> but I will say, I also feel like some people feel like voting doesn't matter because the last election, like the popular vote was for Hillary and Trump still won because it's about the representatives that are in office mm -hmm. and not about what you actually vote Absolutely. for. Absolutely. The primaries, I do believe, are more important because like, our votes do count more uh, in terms of like who we elect for our delegates and like who we're like trying to get for the primaries. But ultimately, like we don't really live in a true democracy. Mm. And so like I feel like a lot of people don't Totally believe in the system anymore because the system just been proven to be like fractured. And I also do like agree with Audrey that it's a lack of education around the subject. It's like a lot of people feel afraid to vote because they feel like they're not educated enough. Yeah. Like mm. they're afraid they're gonna yes. vote wrong. So a lot of people won't vote because of that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Intimidation. Yeah. 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 It's intimidation for sure. And who's the quiet one sitting here? <laughs> is she going to voice her opinion today? I think not. She's taking a sip of water. Does that, does that mean no when you go to take a sip of water? That's what they do on the talk show. Just give us a snap. Just give us a snap. So, so is that the thing now if you agree? Snap. snap. This is yeah. the art kid thing. Oh, okay. I just learned something new. All right. Okay. I can yeah. go and show my dog. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not going to do that in poetry instead of yeah, clapping. We, we do it for everything. Yeah. Oh, that's more okay. thing. Like, yeah, like like we support you, um, yeah. okay. like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's okay. like, mm, oh, nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like smart, big brain. Big brain. <laughs> I like that, big brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, we, are, are we going to get your opinion? You know, your opinion does matter. Um, I was going to 
the younger people don't know because one, we're not really educated in that field or area, and then also if we do go, we're kind of forced by our parents a little bit. Like if they're either Republican or Democratic, they they want you to vote that or they want you to vote. Yeah, that. So I feel like we really don't have an opinion until we're like 18 or older than what we are to like really dive deep into like the politics and what your actual opinion is. Exactly. Yeah, because my dad's a crazy Republican yeah. and here I am, I'm like, Bernie, Bernie, right. Bernie, but like, <laughs> it's like a little freaky to have that opinion because, you know, Did you say that in front of him? Um, I think he knows that like we do not see eye to eye, my sister and him don't see eye to eye, but we're also both LGBT art kids, so, okay. you know, <laughs> we support what we support. I love it, I love it. Yeah. Did you want to finish that thought? You're good to go. She's, she's, she's good to go as she, as she eats her lunch. I hear something else over here. Oh, no, I was just saying what she said. Like, I was like, that was so smart. Okay. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. Any other, any other um, uh, thoughts on the election? It is 128. We've got a commercial in about two minutes. And why am I straying like that? Because this is so small. <laughs> I'm one of those older people that you talk about. <laughs> Middle old. So we're all old is 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s, yeah, once you start getting up there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're old, okay. And I think like the age of the candidates really does not matter as much as what they stand for and what they believe in and yeah. how they're going to act on that, uh, which is why personally I am planning to vote for Bernie because looking at his social policies, especially as a student, I think about like how much my tuition is. Um, I'm someone who has like struggled with insurance and access to health care, which I think is a major issue and he is dedicated to tackling that in pharma. So I'm looking at like especially because he's older you have all this history of consistency on these issues and that's what's important yeah. to me because he's continually stood for those things. Yeah. Okay. Plus whoever's whoever's gonna support that environmental change like I am here for it. The environment is important when we live here. Yeah. Mm. When we come back after this break, I want to talk about the virus mm. and what you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you are listening today on the on blogtalkradio.com female solution and you want to call in and comment, you can do so at 515-605-9325, press 1 to speak, and we will open your microphone. And uh, just so that you know, I'm here with the lovely students, the lovely ladies, uh, the, the I'm, I can't call it, young people, the young people, <laughs> here, the young people here at Columbia College. It's a Saturday. You all didn't know that I was alumni from Columbia. You were. I graduated in 1993. Ooh, amazing. Were you all born then? No, no, no. Nope. <laughs> 2000. 2000. Yeah. The oldest. You're the baby. Oldest. Wait, you're 99. Wow. Just a year. Yeah. Yes. Nice. You're 99. Okay, so that really makes me feel old. Okay. <laughs> old is a good thing because it is. Yeah. It somebody means wisdom said, and knowledge. Thank exactly. you. Yes. Wisdom and knowledge, right here <laughs> on the female solution, and that came from the young people. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to take a break, and I'm going to give this back to Naima because I can't find. Uh, <laughs> oh, there the commercials are. I can see them now. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back, and we'll have some more information for you. We're going to talk about the virus. How do you want to know about that? Okay, so stay close. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Naim Latif with the Media Connection for the On Air Network, and we are here in front of the courthouse with Carolyn Ruff, who has been in the courtroom during the Justice Smollett case. And we want to get a little bit of insight as to what happened. So can you tell us, we just heard from the lawyers who explained that he did plead not guilty. Can you tell us what you observed in the courtroom? Uh, I, I observed that the uh, judge uh, that supported his case, I think he's, he's a fair uh, judge. And they wanted to hold him on a bond, but the judge said, no way. You know, they gave him an eye. Oh, wow. Then they wanted to uh, hold him for like $10,000. Oh, my God, yeah. You're talking about it. They should pay that in order to get out. The judge said, no. You're not, you know, you're not ready for this case. And so maybe you should set another court. Uh, so they both judges and the lawyers 
because they set a court date for March 18th. So uh, we're just hoping that people come on out and support Justin because I believe that he's innocent. And I've been saying this from day one. You know, I think it's a setup. I think it's political uh, to, you know, to bring Kim Fox down or whatever. But I truly believe that Justice Smollett would get off. And he would, yeah, he would be free. So we're just asking people to please pray. Uh, you know, of course, the family is under a lot of stress. I'm under a lot of stress. Those who know Jesse is under a lot of stress, and we all believe that he's innocent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn Ross. Mm -hmm. I'm Naeem Latif with the Media Connection for the On Air Network, and we'll keep you informed on the next court date. The news tells us that a law was just passed 65 years after the lynching of Emmett Till, making lynching illegal. 65 years after the brutal killing of a 12 year old boy our lawmakers finally made such atrocity a crime officially well perhaps our society has moved one step closer to an actual civilized society but we still have a long way to go there are places in the world, in our universe, there are places where this kind of horrific crime would never have occurred because the sickness that is inside the people that would make them commit such an act simply is not there. This is where we must go as a society. We can pass laws and we can make wrongful acts punishable by a fine or jail time. And in some cases, there's even the death penalty. But no deterrent can make a person treat others as they should treat them. If on the inside, they are still sick. It is a sickness that makes people commit hurtful acts against someone else. We must breed this kind of behavior out of our cultures. And this means changing the way we raise the children. The sad thing about the whole history of lynching, particularly in the American Southern states is that it was an activity that was considered entertainment and people brought their children to watch. Imagine the trauma as a child being brought to some place where people are in a festive mood, having cookouts and eating food and watching someone get slowly tortured to death and having the people, the adults around you celebrating the sickness that creates. These are the ugly stories in America's past that will not go away if ignored because there are people who are now adults who were children at the times when their parents participated in the mass murder. It's a mass murder because a mass of people gathered to murder someone. That's what a lynching is. So we now have a law that makes this kind of activity against the law. But truly it was a violation of spiritual laws all along. The taking of a life is a violation of spiritual law. When we can teach spiritual laws, then we will not need enforcers in the form of police officers. We will not need enforcers in terms of armies. We will not need 
prisons as punishments. There are societies in which there are no prisons, there are no police, there are no armies. There is only peace. There is only cooperation. There is only love. Right now, many people can't even imagine a society in which there is no strife. They can't imagine it because they have not seen it anywhere in their lives. Everywhere they have been, they have seen hostility, conflict, and violence. And so they don't know how to create a world, a society, a community, a home where people know how to get along. They don't know how. Well, of course, it can't be done by enforcement from the outside. A police force cannot keep the peace. Only the people can create peace from what's inside of them. And if it's not inside of them, it will not be in the society. No matter how many police you have, no matter how many laws you have, no matter how many armies threaten annihilation if people don't obey. Peace comes from within each individual soul. And when souls are evolved to a higher consciousness, when there is understanding and when there is a manifestation of the inner peace, in the conducting of affairs with other people, then the society becomes peaceful. And so all the things that disturb the peace disappear, such as prisons and police and courts and fear, because people are self-regulated. They are living according to the spiritual laws that are inside of them. Today, Hans Wilhelm shares with us 12 traits of highly evolved people. When we have these traits, then there will be no need for any police, any prisons, any court systems that meet out punishment because people will choose to treat each other in a way that is just and fair because of what's on the inside of them. It truly is a choice. People choose not to steal because they don't want to be a thief. They choose not to lie because they don't want to be a liar. They choose not to commit violence because they don't want to be a violent person that violates other people. They don't want to be that on the inside. So the desire to be the person that is reflecting the divine energy of the creator is the motivation behind the behavior of a person who manifests these traits, these 12 traits of highly evolved people that Hans Wilhelm explains that all of us, once we manifest, will contribute to a peaceful world. We can create the world we want to live in if each of us on the inside develops these traits. This is what it takes. It's not going to happen from the outside. It's not going to happen with more laws. Yes, it's good to have the law, but if the law is not in your heart, then it won't even be obeyed. If that were the case, then we would not have prisons and jails and police right now. If that were the case, that all you had to do is make a law. People must choose to live the spiritual laws. And the reason why that doesn't happen 
it's because they are born into to a society in which they are treated badly. They are treated unfairly. They are treated cruelly. In order for us to truly create a world that is a manifestation of the spiritual laws that bring peace, the laws that are inside of us, there must be a generation that can look at the world as it is and recognize that it's wrong and choose to change it. That can be this very generation in which we're living. But in order for that to happen, we cannot keep saying, well, that's just the way things are. Things always been this way, it'll never change. As long as we say that, then we create that. We have to choose to change it. We cannot keep believing that it is beyond the capacity to be changed. We must choose to change it, which means we must choose to change that which is within ourselves, which means we must choose to change the way we treat others. We are living in the world that we created. We made this mess. And everywhere in the universe, this mess does not exist. Right here is where we've made this mess and we must clean it up. We must choose to become the highly evolved beings that can live in a state of peace without fear of others' mistreatment, without fear of hurt, without fear of violence, without fear of suffering. We must choose to create, which means let us take a look at what we have been permitting and make mistreatment of others against the law, just as this new law making lynching illegal was passed. We all have read the Ten Commandments, basic moral codes of conduct, not necessarily government laws enforced by police, but laws of living, each person choosing to follow these laws. So now, if this is the law that we live by on the inside, there are certain things that we've been permitting on the outside that wouldn't occur. Certain things we would not allow to be a part of our society. We would not allow the neglect of children if we truly were following the spiritual laws. We would not allow them to be abandoned. We would not allow them to suffer and starve or suffer with fear of physical harm. We would not allow the neglect of those who are physically incapable of taking care of themselves to be begging on the streets. We would not allow these horrific things that we have been allowing if we were following just those Ten Commandments. We wouldn't have certain practices, taking people's homes if they can't pay a mortgage note or kicking them out of an apartment if they can't pay rent. We wouldn't allow that kind of treatment of people. We would not have that as a practice. We would not have a banking system that preys upon people. And we would not have a system in which people lived in fear of losing their lives from armed enforcers that under the guise of keeping peace create terror in our streets. Charging people money because they don't have money. We would not allow these things if we were truly living according to the spiritual laws. So let us take a look at every single practice in our society that is unfair, unjust, cruel, neglectful, and wrong, and choose to correct it, not make excuses for it, not keep it because it has been a long time practice, 
If it's hurtful, then it is wrong and must be abolished. Institutions that create suffering must be abolished. And that includes all of the systems that create pain and suffering. The banking system that makes poverty a manifestation of people being punished for not having money. That system of exchange has to be abolished because truly exchange needs to happen between two people who agree the way it used to be. And it happens because people choose to be honest and fair and they choose to agree and keep their word and they choose to forgive if something happens and a person is not able to repay as promised. No jailings, no fines, no punishments. Living according to a system of honor. This is possible. It is possible when everyone is choosing to be a person who is honest and just and right. We can have that kind of a society when each person chooses to be a person who does not mistreat others. It's a personal choice 